Let me tell you a story. It's a true story uh, about, I guess, Jesus, 25 years now ago, I had a job working the counter at a convenience store in Illinois, and among the wares we trafficked in were lottery tickets. Now, those came in three basic forms. You had your scratch-off tickets, you had your weekly Powerball drawings, and you had the twice-daily three- and four-digit draws. And in my experience, the true problem gamblers tended to gravitate towards those last ones. In fact, there was a group of guys that I had dubbed, at least in my own head, lottery snobs, because they seemed to look down at people who use scratch-off tickets. And these folks didn't just pick numbers. They had strategies. Now, for those of you who have never played the pick three, and I would imagine that's most of you, they've got like a dozen different ways that you can play a number, right? So you can pay your dollar and you can bet that like one, two, three is going to come up on the next drawing. And if it does, you win $500. But you have the option to add 50 cents to also play three, two, one for a $250 payoff if that misses. Or you can pay extra to play those digits in any order. Or you can pay extra for a small payout if you just get the first and last digits right. And they all they all had names, right? So people would come in and they'd tell me they want to play 417 straight box, reverse, scattered, smothered, and covered or whatever. And, and they all seemed to think that if they did that just right, if they found the right combination of numbers and add-ons, it was going to give them an advantage at the lottery. Now, very simple math tells you that's a fool's errand, right? The payoff is always 50% of the odds. You pay a dollar, you have a one in a thousand chance of winning 500 bucks. You can monkey around with that all you want, but the odds always remain the same. Your chance of winning X is one in two X, no matter how many variations you add. And though I'm sure my boss would not have approved, I did at least try to explain that math to a few of them once in a while. There was even one instance where I brought in a piece of paper for one guy, I really feel, felt sorry for it. I Like I had done all the math and had little tables and shit. I showed it to him. But as you may have guessed, my carefully crafted charts and tables didn't sway any damn body. And, and it's not like anybody disputed my arithmetic, right? They didn't say, well, you've, you've, you've done your math wrong. But my, my problem was that my math was based on that naive assumption that the numbers are just randomly drawn and that any one number is as good as any other. But among the pick three elite, there was a pervasive belief, nay, certainty that the numbers were actually being chosen by a nefarious cabal that was always trying to stay ahead of their clever guesses. It was not at all uncommon to hear them talking amongst each other and saying things like, yeah, but you know they're never going to let that number come up. But, but, but not only did the cabal choose the numbers in advance, of course, they, they chose them with some kind of discernible purpose, right? That was the idea. My, my mistake was to treat all the numbers equal, but, but that's because I wasn't a lottery snob and I couldn't sense whatever numerological deficiencies they were privy to. When lottery snobs would, for example, compare numbers, they'd say things like, oh, that's a good one, or I don't know if I'd have the guts to play that number. And for my part, I tried to penetrate this myth as well. I explained that randomly generating the numbers would actually make it better for the evil cabal, since any step away from randomness would be a step towards predictability. I pointed out that no number could be better or worse than any other. I pointed out that they didn't even need to invent a secret cabal that was trying to screw them over because the very public cabal running the lottery was very clear on how much they were screwing them over. They, they printed the odds on the back of the fucking tickets. So they were creating a shadowy conspiracy to fulfill the functions that a well-lit conspiracy was already fulfilling. Now, I, I don't want to paint myself as the perfectly innocent observer here, right? Th this was at the height of my libertarian well-actualism phase. Right. And I just figured, you know, look, I was correct and they were incorrect. And all I would have to do is show them the data and teach them how to interpret it. And then they'd come along to my line of thinking. After all, I was smart and they were dumb. What I didn't consider is that by and large, the people I was talking to were living paycheck to paycheck and the lottery offered them a dream of escape. No matter how illegitimate it was, it was a dream. And this illusion about a nefarious conspiracy that kept them down and kept their numbers from coming up, that was a protective measure against confronting what a flawed dream it really was. It was an excuse that, though intangible, could at least be held in the mind pretty easily. 
unlike all my charts and fucking formulas and whatnot. I, I, I looked at them and I just saw a bunch of stupid people who couldn't do math. But what I should have seen is a group of people so thoroughly victimized by the world they lived in that their most plausible means of escape was a rigged system that always took twice as much as it gave. Now, I'm sure some people are surprised that I didn't do another diatribe about the election this week, but I feel like most of you already realized that I did. And look, I get that a lot of people are going to say this is antithetical to what I talked about last week. After all, the last damn thing the American body politic needs is another person calling for us to empathize with the plight of the fucking Trump supporter. But I'm not calling for empathy here. I'm calling for understanding. And no matter what our tactics are going forward, we desperately need to know why people voted for Trump. We need to understand that. We desperately need to understand what systems allowed us to churn out such a hate-filled and ignorant populace because we already tried showing them the tables and the charts, and that shit didn't work. Those idiots are still gambling with our future, and they're pretty sure the only reason they haven't fulfilled their dream yet is that they haven't picked the right three digits.